Welcome to our series on neural filters inside Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to look at one of the holy grails of Photoshop work, and that is putting color into a black and white photograph. We all know that converting a color photograph to black and white is a relatively easy process inside Adobe Photoshop. But what if it's the other way around, where we have a black and white photograph and we need to introduce color into it? Well, in the old days, it took a lot of work and a lot of resources to be able to get there, and sometimes the results weren't all that impressive. Now enters neural filters and the ability to be able to colorize our photographs. Let's have a look at it in practice. Let's start with a lovely example of a 300 ppi black and white image. Why am I mentioning pixels per inch? Well, the more pixel information we have in any one photograph, the more smoother the result of colorization via neural filters. If we were scanning in an old photograph from the 1940s, 1950s, that would have a lot less information in the original photograph, thus the results of neural filters would be a little bit patchy. But we're going to look about how we can improve those uh, in our next example. For now, let's go to Filter and Neural Filters. Give it a moment or two to open up into the dialog box for neural filters. I'm going to go to my zoom tool, just zooming it out a little bit for context. And I want you to notice on the right hand side, we have our usual list of neural filters here. You would have seen some of our videos in the past on these and always stay tuned for future uh, subjects. I'm going to go to colorize. I know that there's an icon. If you see any little cloud symbol on the right hand side of the toggle buttons, it generally means they aren't activated. So you can click on those via the creative cloud and they will become live. I'm going to toggle mine and give it a couple of seconds. And what an amazing AI to kick in and do the job for us. Such, such detailed work. How did it know, and I'm just gonna tweak some of these sliders, see some of the effects that I'm talking here, but how does it know to tweak and change the hair color to be blonde? Because it read the little highlights, I think, in the grays of the, of the, the light tones of the grays in the photograph. So we put in the blue eyes accordingly and had the, the, the pink of the lips, the shadal difference between the shoulder, to the from the light shoulder to the dark shoulder. It is so well done across the the uh, the whole of the whole spectrum is absolutely amazing in what it's done here. The background images has, isn't so good, but then there's not a lot of information to work with there. But they're all things we can fix afterwards very very quickly inside Photoshop itself, right? I'm going to output this as a new layer, and I'm going to click OK. So there you go, folks, a very usable example of colorize and a really impressive use of AI to get a result done so so quickly. Now let's see how it fares out with an older style photograph with less information in it and also with some artifacts of scratches and some marks from over the years. Okay, so we're going to go to filter. We're going to go back down into neural filters again. Opens into our dialog box like so. And from in here, I'm going to introduce you to a new one at the bottom called Photo Restoration. Now it's in beta mode, so you will have to enable Photoshop beta to get access to this, but this speeds up the process of being able to restore old photographs by removing blemishes, scratch lines, any marks effectively that take away from the overall visual of what we want to see in our image. And we have a lot of tweaks here. It does, the first thing it does by default, it starts to focus in around the eyes, the nose and the mouth to give a little bit more clarity. Now some of this can be a little bit too much for an old photograph because the ears and the rest of the face don't come with it if you know what I mean. So sometimes you can look a little bit kind of there's the effect, but the rest hasn't taken the effect. So you can tweak and edit those uh, depending on the slider positions that you choose. It has a fantastic uh, scratch remover, you need a fantastic job of replacing that. If I compare that against the original, there's the original and there's the improved version. Fantastic. We, I, I would normally use the clone tool to do this, but so fast. Let's apply the colorize and let's see what we get. I mean, folks, you know, Click of a button and we have full color. The facial skin tones are excellent. Little bit of artifacts around the teeth, the eyes are a little bit too, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I might have to fix them in post. The background I'm not 100% uh, in love with, but then again, like I said earlier on, the quality of the pixels in the high quality image of the model at the beginning versus an old style photograph that wouldn't have that information within it, you're always going to find it's going to be a harder um, sell to try and get there, okay? So just be aware of those nuances and the rest can be your tweaks of your sliders, trying to find the right optimum mode. You're not having clicked yes on any of this. You're kind of just trying to find your way in it. And once you find that particular style that you like, remember you can always use Photoshop to take it another step forward to give you uh, a more, uh, a, a better version of what you're trying to achieve, okay? So for me, I'm going to output here. I have lots of options here. I'm going to output it as a new layer and I'm going to click OK. 
it's going to bring me back into Photoshop. And we have, again, I have a couple of examples over here. So there's the original version, the un unrepaired, the colorized version of it. And then I went on and made another version in Photoshop uh, where I've put in the background. I've changed it to blue, put a little bit of blur in there because I thought it was a little too sharp in areas. And with the, with the neural filters and my own talents of doing and getting where I needed to go to, I achieved something that is very, very usable and works very, very well when I'm trying to make a colorized version of a black and white image. Again, neural filters jumping to the rescue there, folks. The ability to make colorized photographs in the click of a button. Absolutely fantastic AI in play.